Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as Jayavarman the Seventh in the Khmer Empire, where we've taken over Japan. We own a large chunk of the world, and we're also continuing to expand out across these unoccupied islands. The goal of which to be is to acquire as much land as humanly possible to turn into seaside resorts. Our tourism is at a healthy 1,256, and we are slowly gaining up on the victory progress. Uh, we are earning just about a tourist every one to two turns with every player in the world. We do need to make sure that we get open borders and trade routes with as many people as possible. For example, right now we're missing a trade route with Japan, so our next trade route must be to Japan if we can make it happen. Uh, there's also quite a bit of land over here that we could make use of for a little bit of national parkage and stuff like that. If we could steal the city of Vigo, that would be big for us. So generally, I would say progress has been good and, and will continue to be good on the front of making a tourism victory. Now, there's quite a bit of uh, investment that I have to do to get each individual tile, right? Because I have to, I have to buy the tiles and the tiles are expensive. Um, but we do have expropriation plugged in to make the tiles cheaper and we're making pretty good money. We're also selling things off to the AI. Things like aluminum, coal, horses, all our, our, like we're just selling off all of our strategic to get as much gold as possible right now so that we could feed that into not only buying great works if particular of writing is the main one that we like to buy um, we could buy great works of writing and we can also buy more tiles to continue to develop our empire now we're not gonna we're probably gonna try to avoid buying builders but that's mainly because it's more efficient to buy to build the builders and then buy the tiles but the vast majority of my actions right now is really just to lay down forests and national not national forests national parks woods and stuff like that. We did just finish computers, bumping us up to a healthy 1,600 tourism per turn, which should just about put us at the level where we're going to earn a tourist per turn for every player in the game. And um, so we should start to see this number go up quickly. Hey, 69, once again. Let's take plastics for the plus one food to fishing boats. In my capital city, we did manage to build a builder. I'm going to go for the Natural History Museum, the National History Museum, sorry, for the plus four great works of any type. Uh, it'll also give me access to my late game card. I'm going to temporarily dework this jade so that I get slightly more appeal here. And I'm going to try to rework a little bit of this land if I can. I'll slap down some more uh, seaside resorts. We're making great progress over here. Many, many builders are still on the way. So let's go ahead and pop down another national park over here. That's another plus three era score. More importantly, it is a lovely boost to our tourism. That's 60 tourism per turn. That's really damn nice. Let's dig up another artifact. This one is a Hojo industrial era artifact. I had to fill up those museums very nicely. I was just thinking there that it's, it's been a while since I've done an Indonesia playthrough. I guess I just about can't get the appeal in here because there is just a little bit too much floodplains. That's okay. I'll just plant a woods here to give a little bit of adjacency to this seaside resort that's totally fine and we should in theory be able to place another national park on these four tiles as long as we can get them in one city let me have a look one two three no but i could get them into this city so i'm going to go ahead and swap those tiles over buy them and then faith purchase myself a naturalist and that should be able to be turned into a national park all right let's do a chop of the jungle here Perfect. Plus two error score. We will put down the seaside resort. I'm not Susan of Singapore, so I can't change their terrain. But if I take suzerainty of them, I might be able to plug this down into a forest, which would give me just enough adjacency on this tile to get another seaside uh, resort on there. If I settle this city right here, it'll be in bad loyalty, but it will allow me to trade with Japan, which would be quite nice. Although I think I might actually already be able to trade with Japan. Let me have a look at that. Yeah, so I'm going to move this trader to Haradum because I can trade with ha from Haradum to Japan and that should be fine. The sea level does change in nine turns, so I totally need to go through and get flood barriers in cities. I kind of forgot about this as a mechanic, so I'm going to have to buy some military engineers to move over there. I think we can, we can prevent some of the flooding if we start the flood barriers now, but I'm going to have to spend quite a bit of money on military engineers and flood barriers. I need to protect my coastline. It's especially important in a tourism game to keep all those seaside resorts chugging. I will say that the flood barrier thing is probably one of my least favorite mechanics uh, in the game. I just don't think it makes the game more fun, just like more annoying. And I am kind of a person who thinks that, I mean, like most, like I don't, I don't like mechanics that makes game less fun and more annoying. 
I, I'm a very simple person, so I appreciate the idea of flooding. But if, if if there was a if there was a switch to like toggle it off, I would toggle it off. I would like tourism from Great Works of Riding to be doubled, so I'll vote for that. Although people are likely to ban that, I am happy to ban coal power plants because I don't want anyone to make any more of those. So tourism from riding is doubled. Nuclear power plants are banned. Philip gets things and World Games has been passed. Plus three era score for building the last building in the entertainment complex. And we did just get access to plastic. So we can get our hands on more oil if we so choose. I'm looking for Seastead tech. So I think I'll research stealth tech and composites. Although, hang on, what era are we in? We're in the atomic era. So maybe it would be good for me to focus on researching atomic era techs because they're slightly cheaper. Or rather, they don't have a large multiplier to their expensiveness applied. Um, if I look at this, who's generated the most CO2? It looks like it's Korea. I'm kind of second there. I think that's because of... I mean, I haven't even really burnt that much coal. And yet, um, sea level is rising. I'm going to come in here... And I would like to convert to oil power, but I'm kind of busy. I'm going to send my engineers that I'm producing to cities that require the most, the most turns to finish their flood barriers. I wish this builder would move. It's extremely annoying where he's standing. He just needs to get out of there. I do think we're kind of out of room for great works of music. So I'm going to build the occasional broadcast center, I think. Plus it's worth like six culture, which isn't bad. I am sitting on six envoys. So I'll put another Envoy into Hunza because that would get me a nice boost of gold. I'm making like 400 gold per turn, which isn't terrible by any stretch of the imagination. I've got military engineers coming out. Um, I don't necessarily want to build a seaport. I definitely want more builders. So it's like builders, like the my empire's demand for builders at this point in the game is genuinely uh, insane. The sheer amount of builders we need. Pop down a little fishing boat right there. And yeah, you're doing good work here. Why don't you head to the north and build these seaside resorts for me? Excellent work on producing this. Curious to see how we're doing. Right, we're up to 83 tourists. Um, Japan's total tourism number has started to climb down because we are we're stealing those tourists. So we're, we're lowering the bar. Spain, Portugal and Indonesia, we're overcoming quite well. Korea is still a little bit of a problem because they're making 2.5 tourists per turn. Um, but we will slowly overcome them. I mean, just the fact that I'm making 700 culture per turn. Ooh, we just hit that flooding milestone. Oh, that hit a little bit sooner than I thought. Yeah, I think we just lost a holy site, maybe. God, I wish this builder would move. It's so annoying. It's like, and then this tile flooded, so now I can't make it higher appeal. Whatever, I'll just, I'll just, I'll live with the fact that this is going to be a forest here. I'm looking for environmentalism. It's one of these two texts here, probably. Digital democracy, I think, is the play here. Yeah, I think so. I think digital democracy is the play. The reason that digital democracy is the play is because synthetic technocracy will lower my tourism by 10%. And corporate libertarianism has three military policy slots, which I absolutely do not need. I only need one. And so that leaves digital democracy as like the optimal play because it has five, it has like diplomatic policy slots, which isn't ideal. Honestly, synthetic techno technocracy would be really, really nice, except for that minus 10% tourism. So I'll go for digital democracy instead. So I think the permanent flooding wow next sea level change in one turn why is that why is it one turn away what the hell why is why did why did this flood so quickly all right nice we got another seaside resort down here can't quite make a seaside resort here so i'll just plant woods on a lumber mill that's what i'm doing i'm just trying to make sure my land like if i can't have the perfect land i'm just trying to increase the quality let's go through all of my cities and make sure i'm building flood barriers everywhere because by knowing where the flood barriers are being built then i know where i need to direct my military engineers okay i think i went through every single city and every single city is now building a flood barrier uh, now i need to go down to units and what i need to look for any city with an encampment that can build a military engineer this can be like a much easier visual search honestly all right let's sell off some luxuries sell off strategics as well really 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 need um gold right now to buy those military engineers uh, particularly down here in this Japanese area. There's a lack of military engineers down there. Military engineers can be used to speed up the construction of uh, things like flood barriers. Korea, god damn you. What the hell, man? They just keep settling wherever I'm sending my settlers. They are like one step ahead. All right, lovely. There's another national park over here. Very happy with that one. That is a 
Uh, 57 Tourism National Park. We will be able to bump that up by building another little bit of forest around it. Ooh, I could use a Guitarja Ancient Era Artifact. I definitely need more. Oh my God, there's a ton of artifacts in Spain and Portugal. This whole area over here is just filled with them. I definitely need to get around to building more archaeologists. It's just one of those things where it takes a while. Um, so we did just hit 1.5 meters of flooding and I did complete my first neighborhood. So this is really, really annoying because I think that just made some of the flooding permanent that I've experienced. Again, really annoying because it seems to have happened like really quickly. It was like one turn it flooded and then the next turn it flooded, which was very strange. We've lost 30% of the polar ice and that is affecting my empire. We're up to 97 tourists, so we're almost dominant. We can get started on the biosphere and I do think that that is important enough to start right now because while I don't think the game will last 45 turns, I do think what I can do is come in here and take all of the nearby tiles and set the city to high production and high food. It'll take 41 turns, but we might be able to bump that up over time. Is there a way I could inject more production into this city? Well, there's some sec there's some old growth forests I could chop and some tiles I could improve with production. Okay, why don't you head over to Nagano, little um, military engineer. Go ahead and repair that. We used a military engineer here. Uh, we'll send you to there as well. Boom. Let's sell off this Diplo favor. We can get a nice chunk of cash. Keep on producing those military engineers to finish these off. Oh, that's a huge loss of tourism over there if I let this whole place flood. So I need to get military engineers over there ASAP. Pop down woods, improving these national parks. All the woods are coming and we got ourselves another archaeologist. Let's go grab that shipwreck. Is that a high enough appeal? Oh, it is technically if I get rid of these. Um... Oh, yeah, I think we can... I think we can make this work if we do a little bit of chopping and stuff. A couple more seaside resorts there. I'll take that. Let's add the production to this building. Uh, we should build the military engineers rather than building the flood barrier in here because the military engineers are actually a more efficient way to build your flood barriers if they're expensive. Basically, every charge of a military engineer will complete one fifth of a flood barrier. So you're better off using military engineers for that venture than like trying to hard build it because it just it just won't work as well. Korea is denouncing me. Of course they are. They're mad at me. They were allowed to be mad. I think I'm flipping their city independent actually very slowly, but it hopefully will t pick 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 a pace as my um my cities over here grow and inflict more pressure by another military engineer in Takamatsu. We've got them heading off all over my empire trying to fix up these problems and you did little military engineer chick. You, you switch to the flood barrier and then go back to building military engineers. This way I can turn 170 production into 512 or 526 rather. So keep it on the way. Pop down a national park up here in Via Vimayapura. And then we can start planting forests in here to actually bring that up to standard. Still waiting on a trade route to free up so that I can chat to Japan and make good friends with him. All right, a little bit of a production boost in here, 19 turns. Nothing I can sell, sadly, because nobody has any money because they've already stripped the world bare of all their cash. We're a, a spy stealing gold right now would be really nice. We have a look. Does anyone have a commercial? Cartagena has one. Guanju has one. Oh, my God, a thousand gold stealing Guanju. Go there and start stealing money. Do you know how helpful that money steal would be right about now? Insanely. Right, there's nuclear fission. We're working on advanced flight next. Not that those techs are particularly important to the outcome of the game. They're kind of just like whistle stops on my tour around the tech tree. All right, I decided to do a little bit of chopping in here to try to speed up the biosphere. It's not gonna like massively impact the rate that we get it, but it will help. Everything that leads to me getting more tourism is useful. We finally knocked Japan down below 500 tourists and we are now up to 111. That's an exciting moment for us. Let's add production. There you go, shaving hundreds of turns off of that. I have the cash to buy more of these military engineers. I'll buy one and anchor what actually, because this city could really use it. The amount of production in my empire being absorbed by this flooding problem is kind of insane actually. Um, and it's causing problems in all sorts of my coastal. Let's dig up this nice artifact over here. We will choose a barbarian industrial era artifact. We found a fresco. Very nice. We shall add the production to this building, shaving six turns off that in Nagano. Next sea level rise is expected in eight turns, which is a little bit scary considering we're not hitting our milestones. I'm going to go ahead and skip Janaki Amal. Oh my god, we hit Mary Leakey. Bro, do you understand how rarely I get to play with Mary Leakey? She is such a godlike great scientist. She gives you 300% normal tourism from artifacts. Dude, I cannot believe we hit Mary Leakey this game. Do you, that is actually a win condition right there. 
Mary Leakey is a great, it's literally the only great scientist in this entire thing that we care about is Mary Leakey. Um, when I play tourism games, I build campuses and run campus research grants in the hopes of hitting the one in four and getting Mary Leakey. And we got it by accident this game. That is insane. I wasn't even trying for Mary Leakey. So like the tourism, let's have a look at the artifacts here just to kind of get an idea. Um, like a normal museum of artifacts is 18 tourism. I popped this lady, skadoosh, okay? Advanced flight is boosted, yada, yada, yada. More importantly, this is now worth 36 tourism. This is now worth 45 tourism, okay? That is insane. And if I start doing theming and I'm able to like optimize my stuff. Oh, another museum gets themed. Oh, ha, ha, ha. we're about to break 2000 tourism per turn, dude. We're pogging. I don't need to get control of any more of these city states. I think I'm happy with the ones that I have. I don't I don't need to do anything else. Um, let's go ahead and add production to building. And we'll add production to building. Uh, the Mobius engineer occupying the same tile is fantastic. So we got the biosphere down to 33 turns, which ain't bad. Uh, ooh, a naval battle between Philip and Gatarja. I'll take a Philip artifact because I don't think I have one yet. And this, oh yeah, I think this leads to me being able to theme this museum. So it's coming along. Oh, and I can theme this museum. So I've got two museums that are unthemed right now that are filled with random ass junk, but one of them is really close to theming. Most of my museums right now are themed, which is fantastic. 45 tourism per museum. It's amazing. Okay, I'm going to trade with Sendai, not because I want that trade route, but just because I want the tourism boost from trading with Japan. I have the tourism boost with all players in the game right now. Um, did I remember to plug in cards? I need to... Yeah, when I finish Digital Democracy, we'll kind of change our government around a little bit. The reason I'm buying my military engineers down here in the south is because in these other in the other areas I can build them more quickly and basically I can't supply enough military engineers down here in this area from just Takamatsu I can't do it quick enough so I have to I have to buy them to help keep up elsewhere I can just about keep up and like realistically I could probably do like some prioritization maybe I should focus on getting this one or this one or this one but I'm just like I'm sending them out wherever the nearest thing is which is honestly it is inefficient for sure I'm not going to contest that but it's also just like simpler for my brain is like this is the nearest crisis area you go there um, and we'll just make do with the fact that it's inefficient right we unlock digital democracy but we don't actually need to take it i think democracy itself is like slightly better because it has more economic policy slots whereas if i if i count right i can have one two three four five six economic policy slots in digital democracy i can have one two three four five in democracy I guess technically I could have more. I could have one more if I switched. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll switch. If I can technically have one more, that is technically better. So we're, let, let's do a, gov a government reset, essentially. We've got logistics. That's a necessary one. We've got colonial tactics. This is just really efficient in terms of a card. Uh, let's do our diplomatic policy first. So colonial taxes feels good to me. I don't care about music censorship. Republican legacy feels super efficient. We definitely want to have all the tourism cards that we can plugged in because that's like a decent amount of tourism right there. Plus one amenity from stadiums. I don't know if that affects the AOE that they provide. We definitely want expropriation and public works to keep up the production of settlers and builders and the cheaper tile purchasing. Holy site adjacency is still pretty relevant because it's worth production food and fate. So it's like a very efficient card slot. Otherwise, we've got one more economic or just wildcard policy slot. So I think Merchant Confederation is just a great pick. Raj is fine too because it's just a little trickle of resources. Harbor District adjacency isn't bad here. I'm trying to see if there's like maybe a military policy that would help me out. I mean, Levee on Mass is nice for the gold. I think I'll go for naval infrastructure. I think that's a straight up better. So we'll go ahead and confirm that. My amenities are pretty dang high. We're almost a thousand culture per turn. We have broken the 2200 mark of tourism and we're about to hit environmentalism for another 25% boost to tourism across our empire, which is going to be fantastic. We do have to get venture politics before we can go for that. And there might be some tourism-y stuff down here in the late game that we can make use of. Uh, we did get HG Wells, so I will recruit another great rider. It's always good to get another trickle. I guess I'll build another couple of builders. I don't really need that many settlers. I guess I could crack out a pair of settlers to send down to this desert area. There's technically some uh, good seaside resorts down here. Building shopping malls also seems really, like a pretty good transition for some of these cities right now that they don't they don't have much in the way that they can do to really help the effort because I've already built all the builders and done all that stuff so we're getting to the point now where um 
plus four tourism from shopping malls is like one of the best production conversions I can do. Because like the vast majority of my tiles have been like improved or converted over to converted over to tourism production. All right, I think we can finish the flood barrier here. Perfect. So now all these tiles are protected, which means we should be able to repair some of these things. Um, but we need to keep making engineers. I'll buy another engineer here. Remember, gold purchasing just got more expensive for me. Uh, I'll put you into the capital and I will go to my great works of writing and I will move the great works of writing out of the capital. We've almost completely filled this up. We're making nearly 740 tourism per turn, 744 tourism per turn from the entirety of all of our great works, which is amazing. One thing I should double check, are there any of these cities that I haven't built uh, my archaeologists in, like Takamatsu? Did you get your archaeologist? I'll add that to the queue just so I don't forget about it. Um, but it's not going to be my priority. My builders have become like insanely expensive. They're like 300 production each. Um, and we're not even close to finished building them, honestly. Um, it's genuinely terrifying the amount of build charges that I've pumped into my empire. I'm going to settle on the silver so that I don't have to improve that tile, which will lower the appeal of nearby tile. I'll build another great work of writing with HG Wells in the capital, which is very nice. Uh, there goes the sea resort, a seaside resort. We need to get rid of this one to put another sea resort there. You are going to go here to improve this and you're going to go here to improve this. And finally, I think we can finish the flood barrier in this city, p clawing back all of these beautiful seaside resorts here um, and preserving an important piece of my empire. Now, where is the next one? Osaka needs help, but probably not a high priority, but I'll help it anyway. Just trying to preserve and protect as many tiles in my empire as possible. Flood barrier tap. Okay, we're bringing this down. How long? Five turns until the next flood barrier, uh, or the next flood level rise, rather. There's venture politics, giving us three turns until environmentalism. More builders are finishing, which is excellent for me. Do I, I don't think I need to go for broadcast centers. I think, um, yeah, I think I, I'll start buying great works of music soon. I'm now dominant over Spain. Um, but I can continue to steal tourists from them. I've brought Japan down below 500 and it's still decreasing because I crippled their economy. Uh, Korea is still climbing. However, I should start uh, pulling that back once I start making about 3000 uh, tourism per turn, if I can get my multipliers against them up um, and hopefully maybe improve our relationship. Part of our problem is that we have a decent amount of grievances with Japan, which is hurting our relationship with a bunch of civs. Um, I'm going to send you a resident embassy. And how about a friendship request? Um, no, you did not like that. Russia, how would you like... I could probably start tracking when their denouncements will run out and start sending gifts to try to make them friendlier. But they all denounce me around the same time. So I'm going to send Russia a little gift. 100 gold is usually enough to get you the plus 10 favorable trade deal. Um, which can be just enough to bump them up into being friendly. I'm not going to take corporate libertarianism as my government. I don't think it's necessary. Let's go ahead and settle this city. Monument Granary. That's your job. You exist to make me tourism. And you have no other purpose. Essentially, you pass butter. All right, step here. Add your production. Move you down this way. Uh, we might be able to do a Amori this turn. Okay, so we saved these tiles. It's not like super important that we did that, but I, it just... But I, like, it's completely not necessary what I'm doing here. I fully admit that. But it's like, it feels like the right thing to do. That if I was like a benevolent government, god king dictator, and my cities were flooding, I would do at least something to try to prevent that, right? All right, we're repairing our seaside resorts, which is bringing up the appeal. Because remember, uh, pillaged tiles lower appeal. So you, you want to avoid pillaged tiles when you're going for tourism. Let's gain sources in Korea so we can start stealing cash over the next few turns. I don't know how useful or long that'll last, but it'll be part of the game plan. Get rid of this tile. We're going to start trying to get more production into Nagoya because this biosphere might actually become relevant. The atomic era ends in 10 turns. We definitely have a golden age secured, so we're not worried about that. We will be able to get another wish you were here, which will give us really good scaling. Um, I have a ton of faith, um, but nothing that would really scale me up in tur tourism wise. Uh, what's the science victory looking like here? Uh, nobody's quite yet competing for it. Let's drop some woods here. I'm going to pop over to here. I'm going to go ahead and grab robotics for plus one food from pastures. I definitely want to get to some of these super late game techs, but it's going to take me a while. These are expensive technologies. Once we head to the in, in the um the what you call it, once we get into the information era, a lot of these technologies will get cheaper. Now we got National History Museums in the capital. Um, but our Diplo quarter got blasted, so we're gonna have to repair that. I think the volcano erupted. It's been erupting like the entire game. Seaside resort and then pop a quarry back down. That'll mean that these are like lower than average seaside resorts, but even so they produce seven tourism per turn, which is worth it. I'm kind of curious to see 
Like, where's the biggest concentration of tourists? Like, there's a big concentration over here. There's like a smattering of them throughout a variety of my empire. What about Japan? How's Japan looking? Yeah, there's actually a decent amount of tourists. So we're, we're, we're attracting a decent amount of tourists throughout my empire. It's kind of fun. I think the holy city is like the place. Yeah, the holy the holy site right here. A lifetime accumulation of 2,400 tourism. I'm kind of curious. Maybe these national parks have been doing well too. 400-ish, 600-ish. So they're not doing too amazingly in terms of tourism production. Ugh, they assassinated Pingala because my Diplo quarter was knocked out, which is going to hurt my tourism. And it's also going to hurt my science. And it's going to hurt my culture. I mean, it's at this phase of the game, it's a, I wouldn't say vanishingly small, but it's a relatively small proportion of my total um, research. Let's go ahead and buy a naturalist. That's a good little national park. I need to be looking for those opportunities to make national parks. Like there's a potential one right here too. If I delete this NIDA resource and um, improve the tiles adjacent with woods. That's a great pickup there. There's another potential one here. We could make that work, I think. Or would it be better to move it down a tile to this spot? Yeah, maybe that would be better. Oh, potential national park between the mountain range here. That's a fantastic one. Now, which city would own that? One, two, three. So I think my capital will. Yep, we can make a national park of the capital. It's beautiful. It'll require a little bit of retooling of the landscape, but we need to be on the lookout for these opportunities. Military engineer chomp, and then another military engineer chomp. I think we're looking to buy more military engineers in Japan to get these places on the repair. That'll finish on its own in two turns. So we don't need any more military engineers in there. So we'll send them off to the uh, more important cities to the west. All right, time to claim a great person. Who do we get? Oh, an artist. Artists, I would say, are like one of my lowest tier when it comes to a tourism victory. I know that sounds a little bit mad because like, wait, aren't they like really important? Nope. They are not important at all for a tourism victory. Uh, let's go ahead and get that naturalist here. You don't need them. You can use them, but they are they are surplus to requirements, which is my favorite way to say completely useless. Two turns until environmentalism. We're slowly making progress. It's, it's like the thing about it, when you've got this many builders to micro and this many things, like every single turn is a major sequence of actions. It's a very slow, I don't want to say tedious process, but it's it's plodding, right? It's very plodding. You know, every turn is a is a journey. You know, even though I'm building national parks here, even though I'm I'm you know, even though I'm making slow and steady progress, it is steady, but it is slow progress. That's the key word there. It's a it's a very um thing. But here's the thing: because I'm investing so much time, so much energy, so much effort into each individual turn. The acceleration rate on my tourism is insane. Like we're at 2,400 2, tourism right now, which is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous amount of tourism to have. Spain declared war on me, which is a bit of a weird move for him to do. Um, because I can just take the city of Vigo. Ugh, my capital flooded, taking a bunch of damage on some districts here, which is annoying. Uh, so National History Museum and the Chancery. I'll repair the Chancery first in the hope that the overflow goes through there. I'll also repair the Stupa. Uh, yeah, Spain declared war, which is kind of a weird move for a guy who's like within firing range of giga artillery. The question is, what are my goals with this war with Spain? Um, I think it's just to steal the city of Vigo. That's all I need to do. I really don't know or understand what his possible motivations are here. Uh, but it's a great opportunity for me to use the military that I have sitting around basically accumulating dust and rust. Brilliant. More of our flood barriers are starting to finish. So we'll have to crack out a few builders to repair some of the tiles that got severely damaged in the flooding. And I think we're basically finished making military engineers over here in the Japan area. Um, I could maybe, maybe just need... No, I, th I think I'm done. Yeah, I don't need any more. Uh, up here, though, I think we need quite a few more. There's a few of these cities that could use them. So I'll buy a few. Um, I think the area that needs them the most is over here in the east. Um, but I'm going to buy them over here in Anchor Wat. It's a little bit more centrally placed in my empire. Has access to the oceans. All right, we need to get rid of this iron mine. And then we need to clear off this wood. So we're just about ready for a, uh, for a national park. We need to swap these tiles over. We just need to clear off this lumber mill because you can't put a national park on a tile that has a improvement on it. Has to be an unimproved tile. Double check our trade routes. We have trade routes with everyone except for Spain because he um, declared war on us, which is totally makes sense 
the the part that makes sense is that we don't have a trade route with anyone, not that him declaring war. That part doesn't make sense. Um, I'll take a Zhao classical era, and I'm going to tell Takamatsu to get to work on its archaeologist. I may buy this with gold, honestly. I think that might be the better thing to do. Um, if I can maybe sell off some strategeries. Yeah, I think I'll save up and buy the archaeologist in a single turn and instead just get the city to work on a shopping mall slowly to improve our tourism. Every single little shred of tourism we can squeeze out. I mean, technically, it would be more optimal in terms of my own personal time. Like, me time? My time. Like, my human life years. Um, for me to just hit end turn a bunch of times. But we measure success in game turns. So spending time optimizing to this level is uh, is the play. I could take over Spain's empire and get even more tourism. But I think at this point, my empire is so gargantuan that it just feels completely unmanageable already. Let's swap these tiles over. Then we can pop in a very cute little national park. Excellent. Another three era score. Boom, 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 boom. Constantly trying to push the envelope on how much tourism we can produce. Seaside resort pop down here. Excellent. Thank you for the tourism, good sir. Really want to buy these tiles, but it's just like... I don't, I have, I'm in a gold crunch, right? I have too many things I want to do and not enough gold. It's kind of like a production crunch, but for gold. More flooding happening. Joyful. I mean, it is technically making these tiles that I don't plan to improve better. There's environmentalism. And now we've hit the, the, the critical point of 3,000 tourism per turn, which should lead us to be just about pulling back Korea's tourists faster than they can produce them. We're definitely peeling back Japan's tourists faster than they can produce them. Um, and that will continue to become an even bigger and bigger problem for him. Um, we're really looking for now the card, social media. We want to plug in online communities. This gives us a 50% tourism output to civilizations that we have a trade route with. That's a huge amount of tourism right there. Um, especially because if you consider, we already have trade routes with the vast majority of civs, with the exception of Spain, because we're at war with him, like we said. So it's a huge, huge boost to your tourism. Um, so it takes this... This tourism number right here and multiplies it by 1.5. So that's another 1,500 tourism per turn, which should, in theory, be an extra tourist per turn that we are stealing from every player or thereabouts. A about that much. It's like not exactly that much, but that's that's the that's the EV, right? The the expected value. Um, okay, plus three era score. Another beautiful national park. This one produces uh, 54 tourism per turn. Not bad for a four tile uh, thingy. Now, you were heading down south here to occupy this weird little piece of land. I also have a tank that I need to kind of take over with. Kill that line infantry. Where's my balloon? Can you get over here and let this guy shoot him? Another artillery made it to the water. I don't think I've had multiple artilleries reach max level in a game before. That's, that's a new experience for me, for sure. Flood barrier achieved here, so we managed to protect this land. Um, we should build our hydroelectric dams in the anticipation of finishing the biosphere because that's worth 18 tourism with biosphere, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let me double check that. Yes, 18 tourism. Let's keep planting woods inside our national parks because woods give plus one appeal to adjacent tiles, which makes the entire national park itself better. Up to 60 tourism on that one, which ain't bad. Jump in the water, excavate that artifact. Uh, I'll take a Nalanda because that's a unique one that I've never had before. And that was that guy finished. So, if we put these two together, that's a themed museum. Or at least that's close to a themed museum. If we do these two together, that's close to a themed museum. We're very, very close to three more themed museums. So, Takamatsu is going to be an important part of figuring out how much tourism we're going to be getting here. All right, pop in there, finish that flood barrier. Come down to Osaka and finish that one. And I think that is all the flood barriers of the J the former Japanese empire completely done and rebuilt. Two free randomly chosen technologies, thanks to fit using Grace Hopper, the Admiral. Um, gets me through this era a little bit quicker, which is nice. Let's finish this flood barrier, beautiful. So we'll have to do a little bit of repairing. Um, when the time comes. Actually, I don't need this settler anymore, so I'll quickly do a builder and then get repairing. Pop the military engineer into this city, and then the final charge should finish it. So we have managed to repair this city. Now, um, it doesn't mean that we're perfect, but we are getting through this flood barrier shenanigans. We're up to 194 tourists. 
I think we're gaining about 10 per turn or something absurd like that. It's some unfathomable number. Like, when you start doing the maths on how much tourism I'm generating, considering I've killed two players, essentially, this game. Well, I killed one player, technically. I, I technically killed two players, but I fully killed one. Um, considering everyone is denouncing me, nobody's giving me open borders, I'm, I'm doing pretty well on the tourism front, you know? Interesting fact about how tourism works. Um... So this seaside, any tile that is more than three tiles, I believe it's three. Yeah, more than three tiles away from one of your cities will not actually generate tourism. So this seaside resort here, it's technically producing 18 tourism per turn. And it's been there for ages, but its lifetime accumulation is zero because it's not within three tiles of a city. If you've ever wondered why I generally don't build things like seaside resorts more than three tiles away from my cities, there's your answer. What I could do to rectify this is to settle a city here, then swap all those tiles over, and then this would uh, make these start to produce. And that's probably what I'm going to do with this settler. I could do that with this settler real quick. I may as well. Flood barrier finished in two turns, and then I'll pop in here, and I can finish this one in six turns. Um, I thought I had another military engineer up here to the north, but I guess I didn't. Eight turns is fine. But it's one of the big downsides of having a huge empire, is just how long and how much effort it takes to... Um, deal with like a flood barrier problem like that was a process of uh, like we're still not finished there's so many more of my cities like if I go to the multi queue um, and scroll down just look at how many of my cities are still producing flood barriers um, and like that'll tell you how how much this whole flooding thing has caused a problem for my empire and how much effort it's been required for me to deal with it. I think a single turn right now is taking 10 to 15 minutes um, just due to the sheer number of units I have to micro. I think it's a rewarding experience though when you when you get into this like ultra late game situation and you start seeing like the real satisfaction of a job well done. I think I think it's a rewarding experience. I'm going to make a destroyer here so I can maybe deal with some of these like weird barbarians that are in the north. I'm, also, I'm going to just buy this tile to make this barb camp go away. I know it'll spawn a unit. It's fine. Tourism check. 216 tourists out of 480. Uh, we don't care about the Mars doodly boop. We want to be able to get these tacks. So yeah, I'll just, I guess I'll just go for stealth tech and composites. Oh, a great, nice uh, uh, atomic era musician. It's fantastic news. Win a culture victory. Get a stadium in the capital. A builder in Zanzibar. Repair the ivory so our amenities go far. Get over here to turn it into a seaside resort. And then we go to Durham, Dermody and build a seaport. Do 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 water mill and a Amori. Let's grab a builder, drop a settler in the town so we can get some more tourism on the flow. Do do do. I'm not very good at ad-libbing a song, but listen, <clears throat> it's not important. What's important is I didn't go for wall tourism this game and that's if you know me, that's a big deal, okay? That I didn't go for wall tourism, that's a big deal. I almost always go for wall tourism. That's my thing. Wall tourism is my thing. I can't think of a tourism game in recent years where I never, unless I was doing a challenge, where I didn't go for wall tourism. Um, and I, you know, the reason I didn't go for it this game is I honestly, I just didn't think of it. And it, I was too busy with war and stuff like that, and I would have eaten into my war um, capabilities. I'm going to steal the city of Vigo, um, so that's a yoink, the, the free city, thanks for that. That's going to be a little trickle of tourism in here. Uh, monument and granary, flood barrier, I'll need to get a military engineer. Still waiting for Pingala to come back, he will be back next turn. And, uh, you know, let's do a little bit of railroad, may as well. I think my artillery now can go back to sleep, because mission accomplished, we stole Vigo. Um, and we don't really care uh, about taking any more cities from Spain. We just want to be at peace. How long until he'll take peace? Uh, five more turns. So we won the war five turns in. Bum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba do do ba da bum ba da bum ba da ba boo do loo do loo do loo do ba da la boo. All righty then. Our seaside resort by Phanom Rong has been pillaged by barbarians. How unfortunate. Aid request. Don't care. Oop, didn't mean to try to exit the game. We got a flood barrier. Wait. 
there's always like that moment in my life where I'm like, I'm playing on deity. Like I'm double checking, right? Of course I'm playing on deity. The combat strength of the AI would have told you that. But there's always like this moment where I'm always like, did I? Because it's happened to me a couple of times where I get to like classical era. And I realized I wasn't playing on deity. And since it's happened to me a few times, I'm like, oh, sh-. like I just I get that urge to check every now and again. It's like the equivalent of like checking if your oven is still on. I'm going to go for the Estadio de Medicana because it's a plus six culture and plus two amenities in every city. If an AI builds that, it makes a culture victory basically impossible because the amenities and culture is. I've been thinking about the Patreon that I'd plan to start at the start of this year and I've been wondering which game should I open with I don't know what I should play I'm in fear a lu lu ba do a do la da a do lu lu do a do lu da I don't know where this tune came from but it's kind of stuck in my head a little bit my open borders with Portugal ended I will renew my friendship with my lady guitars. Uh, I will renew my friendship with my buddy, Russia. Um, when does the denunciation run out? 18 turns, 14 turns, 10 turns. Why don't you steal some money from Korea? Korea, Korea. You have captured Vigo. Seriously, is that the city? Is that the city that the world's going to blow up over? Vigo? Don't make me kill everyone. Guitarja, you were my friend. You were my friend. Now you're hurting my tourism. 223. I need to get to peace. I need, I need peace. Um, I'll see if people are willing to take peace with me. Bum 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 I gotta listen to some Darud Sandstorm. I don't even know what to do with this guy. Like World Games is finished in so many turns. I'm the only one with stadiums and aquatic centers, so it's like whatever. Really Just go for that oil power plant, I guess. It seems like a cool thing to do. I'm a scoot man, skip it libid doop 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 doop. I'm a Scotsman. I, I, I. Not a war with Korea. I was stealing this city. It'll flip in a few turns. It's like two turns away. He's got a jet fighter in there. God damn. Uh, yeah, it's flipping. Flip it to me. Bum ba dum, bum ba dum, bum ba do doo. Boo ba doo, boo ba doo, boo la boo. Blow em up, kill em all, take em out. Uh, it would be nice if we owned both of these tiles for a juicy naturalist pickup right there. And then I will buy this coastal tile to put a seaside resort on it. Very nice seaside resort. Pick up this artifact. I'll take a Hammurabi artifact. It's a medieval era Hammurabi artifact. Very nice. 3,200 tourism per turn. We're up to 236 tourists. I wonder how many I'm going to end up on this turn. There's social media. So I think social media is more important to me than harbor infrastructure. So I'm going to plug in online communities. Does it give me 50% tourism output to civilizations that I have a trade route to? Which is honestly, at this point in the game, not a lot of saves. Just Japan, Korea, and Russia I still have trade routes to. But that's a, that's a huge tourism boost. Particularly because they are targeted at the three top, which is good. Good keeping those guys down. Um, yeah, we're gaining. We're gaining. 4,000 tourism per turn against Japan. Uh, 4,000 tourism per turn against Korea. So, I mean, we just, it's just about getting through the turns now at this point. Globalization is fine. I'll pick it up. It'll be a nice boost for our plantations, the governor title. Global warming initiative would be nice for carbon recapture. I can maybe reverse a little bit of the climate change and stop the flooding from happening. Repair my stupas. I don't know what to do with this city. I'm feeling a bit stupa. Let's have a look. Engineers. There's no more engineers to give things. I went for zero great merchants this game. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not build a seaport? That would give me a nice big old chunk of gold to play around with in the late game. There's a whole ton of tiles over here that I need to get fixed up. Uh, you managed to build your harbor, which is great. Go ahead and work on that that lovely lighthouse for me. Uh, we got a builder over here. This is a free settler for me to pick up. Um, do I have a unit nearby? I'll faith purchase like a, the cheapest unit that I can that has high movement speed. And that would be a heli... Cop there. Biosphere in 12 turns. So we can start looking into renewable power if we wanted. Let's go ahead and assign Pingala back in the capital. This is my biggest city. It's only 18 population, but it's still a decent size. I do have a governor title. I guess I'll pop fishery, aquaculture, and Liang. Not that I care too much. 
Um, I'm dominant over Russia, so I just need to work on Japan. F- use the final charge of this military engineer to finish the coastal defenses over here. Looking good. A bunch of tiles that we could afford to purchase here, I think. Like if I buy this tile and then this tile, it kind of steps us in the direction of potential useful builder charges. We'll start sending builders up this way. Could be some fishery stuff. Nothing we can do with that just at the moment. All right, National Park on Sahara Al Beda. That will be a very nice National Park, I believe. If I go to tourism mode, it's 84 tourism per turn, which is fantastic. Um, we are heading into the, a new era next turn, which is going to be an exciting time. That is a nuclear submarine hanging outside Surabaya. I forgot that she had a whole bunch of nukes. I'm worried that someone has nuclear bombs. That's what I'm concerned about. Someone out there has nukes. And they're at war with me. It should be fine, but I need to piece them out. There's stealth technology, so we have access to stealth bombers. Uh, we've got to finish composites to dig for a potential seasteads, because that'll allow us to turn some of our coastal cities into a little bit of tourism. I'm going to take Wish You Were Here once again. I want that 100% tourism from national parks, because we have dipped down below the 3,000 tourism per turn. Dijon has flipped independent, and it will flip to me in 11 turns, which is great for me. Not so great for Korea, but... Um, I don't necessarily have to care about Korea's welfare because they are not my people. Not in the game, at least. In real life, I probably feel, you know, a sense of affinity with the people of Korea. Similar backstories, a similar-ish outlook on life in some respects. You know, remember, the bigger country is always wrong. Uh, so, Kampong Sve, I don't really have anything I do in here. I guess I'll just slowly build a harbour in here. That's really just so I don't have to micromanage the city. It's not actually because I want to build that. Um, it's just like the city can't do anything, so it may as well do something where it's not in the way. A missile cruiser is killing my coastal units, which is fun. Um, that's gonna happen for the next like eight turns while we wait for these guys to stop being mad enough to be at war with me. Philip, uh, how would you like to pay me for peace? Brilliant. I need a builder in here to repair these tiles, so I'll slow build a builder. Finally getting a chance to repair the holy site in Lingapura. I'm over a thousand culture per turn, which is nice. Over 3,400 tourism per turn as well, actually. Um, it's kind of a fun situation. Everything and everything, all of the time. That's where that tune came from. I watched the Bo Burnham video recently. Oh, I was trying to figure out where did that like melody get into my head? Couldn't think of it. Can I interest you in everything, all of the time? That Bo Burnham special was great. I watched it with friends. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm wondering, do I have the appeal? I do not, so I'll have to buy well i can't afford it anyone want to buy you'll buy my luxuries for a thousand gold you'll buy them for a little bit less um i want to buy tiles the more tiles i can buy the better it means more seaside resorts it means more tourism and it means more winning i ate a lot of cake today it's my nephew's birthday i ate a lot of cake it was an oreo cake and it was so good that i said i want it for my birthday because deep down i have the heart of a child beating in my chest um which honestly i'm cool with you know young at heart is what they say yep those missile cruisers sure are killing those really useful old units that i definitely care about oh no guitarja your missile cruisers are doing so much damage to me ah ah i sounded like uh robot voice there for a second like screaming for help i think i'm gonna buy the archaeological museum peace Six turns to make peace, six turns to make peace, nine more turns, 13 more turns. Okay, so I, I do need to be on top of my diplomacy because I don't want people to hate me anymore. Uh, this is also actually a great opportunity to get open borders with Spain, España, and potentially even by, unless I think I already have truffles. Oh, hey, great works. Yoink. Any strategic resource buyers? Probably shouldn't sell my coal because I'm limited on that. Can I interest you in everything all of the time? We finished our shopping mall in Gifu, which is a nice plus four tourism. It's not a huge amount of tourism, like by any stretch of the imagination, but it's an amount of tourism, right? We converted, we successfully converted production into tourism. Mission is accomplished. Who owns this industrial zone? This industrial zone belongs to Kyoto. It might be good to get a, an oil power plant in there. Yeah, it probably is. We'll finish that shopping mall first. I have 10 plus 17 plus 12 cities. That is nearly, that is 39 cities. A lot of cities. Um, that's too many. That's way too many. God damn nuclear submarine fleet. I'm going to faith buy rocket artillery to make them leave. Can I interest you in everything all of the time? Boop, 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 boop
The world is melting, my mind is blelting. I'm losing unit. I'm bluesing blueness. Rock bands are rolling. Wait, did I not? Should I get rock bands and send them to Japan? Oh yeah, I should totally do that thing. Why didn't I do that? I'm, this, is, this is how you know I haven't played Civ Six in a while. Who should I send my rock bands to? Let's have a look. Well, ideally it would be someone I was at peace with. And I'm not at peace with anyone right now, so I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. I don't even know if Japan has districts I can play rock bands on. So Spain might be ideal. All right, let's do it. Let's round off the game with a few rock bands. Can I interest you in everything all of the time? All right, we went absolute giga rock banding. Spent every last ounce of fate. And we're gonna go for the final tourism push. Biddle do diddle do do We've got 290, we need to get 464. I'll research cybernetics in the hope that Seasteads is behind it. Might not be. Seasteads would be a great way for me to convert production into tourism. Can I interest you in everything? That song is just re I need to go listen to it and get it out of my head. I was listening to the Hassan Piker uh, Will Neff AI remake of that. I played a game of Save It Will Neff, I believe, actually. Um, and a few, like, political streamers one time. Long, long time ago. Long, 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 long. God, I don't even remember how long that w ago that was. That was what I considered very briefly getting into, like, the political commentary streamer universe. And then I realized that I actually, I hate, like, I hate inter I hate the interactions those people have with each other. <laughs> and I was like, why would I want to get in on that? <laughs> this is a losing game. <laughs> oh man. I like watching it though. I love I love I like watching people scream at each other. That's entertaining to me. Because I'm like, these guys like literally have nothing better to do. So like I gotta feel pretty good about myself. Uh, arguing about meaningless political concepts online. And not sorry, not that the concepts are meaningless, but the outcomes of their arguments are meaningless. Most of the time. But that doesn't stop me watching it, because I just I love blood sports, man. I love, I, you know what? This may or may not be a hot take, but I would be one of the people in the Coliseum watching people get eaten by lions. I know that probably didn't happen very often, but whenever it did, I'd be buying front row seats. Cause I'd be like, listen, dude, a man's getting eaten like live on television by a lion. That's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yes, I know it's kind of messed up that I want to see it, but here's the thing. How many times am I going to get to see that in my life? I think I should just delete this settler. I literally can't see anywhere that I care to walk him to. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to start deleting units. If I don't, if, if they offer me an opportunity to do something and I don't care, it's getting deleted. Oh, well, a nuclear submarine from their empire appeared. So I just had to recapture that. All right, rock bands. Oh God, Indonesia, you're such a pain in my side, dude. Uh, hey, but religious rock is fun. Space rock is great. I'll take space rock. That's green eel. Uh, space civics will take... Arena rock is fine, I guess. Well, arena rock, yeah. Then we've got pop star for speedy star. Go space rock with atomic cars. Album cover art with holy laser. Ooh, I like surf band. That's kind of a fun idea. Maximum Envoys. Album cover art, Glam Rock. Ooh, Glam Rock is the S tier pick, in my opinion. Another Glam Rock band, Random Tomatoes. Feels good. Um, ooh, Space Rock for Animal Animals. There's a GDR running around my territory and I don't like it. Giant Death Robots from space. But they're for really from Earth. Do -do -do -do. What if aliens came from here? That's the question. I ponder over beer. Let's excavate the artifact. I will take a Zhao Renaissance artifact. That seems quite good. Hide in the little nook and cranny over there. Uh, blast that guy to kingdom come. Pillage that. How long until Biosphere? Seven turns. I'm shocked that we're getting to finish Biosphere. Genuinely shocked. It's been a while since I've played Civ, so I'm a little bit rusty. I'm a little bit rusty. Not crusty. That's a clown from The Simpsons. But I'm, I'm a little, I'm just a little, just a little, little rusty, you know? It's been a while. But we got there in the end, you know? Um, we crossed the finish line. We're up to 302 tourists out of 460. So don't tell me that we didn't make it. We're not gonna take it. 
No, we ain't gonna take it. We're not going to take it anymore. We're not gonna take it. No, we ain't gonna take it. I'm feeling very musical today. I'm always feeling musical. It's just it's just a natural part of who I am. Like I walk around singing um, and it completely drives everyone I've ever known like to the brink of their sanity because I don't just sing. OK, like normal people will like sing a whole song. No, I will sing the same one bar of the one song for like three weeks straight until the person who like has to be in the same room as me is actually contemplating like a prison sentence. <laughs> it's like, how much do I not want to hear the same four words from this one song versus how important is it to me that I stay out of prison? <laughs> like they start having those conversations with themselves. <laughs> but really what you got to tell me is like, hey, listen, buddy, you need a, you need a new tune. And I'm like, that's totally fine, dude. I appreciate that. I'm like, hey, that's cool. I get it, man. I'm really annoying. Listen, I used to get offended. I'd be like, wait, what do you mean? I'm just being myself. And then I realized, oh, actually, the things I do have an impact on other people. And then this was like the huge moment for me is I realized that I could make that same request of other people if they were being jerks to me. I could just be like, hey, don't do that no more. Like, for example, I was talking to someone and uh, they like rolled their eyes at me when we were in conversation. And I just went like, hey, I felt... I felt disrespected when you rolled your eyes at me. Don't do that to me anymore. And they were like, oh, you know, I, I roll my eyes when I'm nervous, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, all right, cool. We just ain't compatible. And uh, that was it. I was like, hey, I made a request. You did not answer in the affirmative. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. We're not emotionally involved. I don't know you. So we're just we're just not going to hang out no more. We're not. We're not friends like that, right? So yeah, I think I think I think I've decided I'm gonna put up with less shit <laughs> for people because I like I, I give people a lot of rope. I've talked about I think I've talked about it in this very series. I give people a lot of rope. I'm like, ah oh, yeah, you know, it's all good, man. We're good. Don't you worry about that. You're fine. But in reality, I'm a seething, boiling fizzling rage no it, well in reality i'm like that kind of annoyed me and i'm just gonna be like specifically when it pertains to how like someone treats me if you're gonna roll if you're gonna roll your eyes at me i'm like i'm yeah no i don't want to hang out with you because that, that's dickish behavior right now i get it maybe maybe they were like adhd maybe they were autistic because i know sometimes people with adhd and sometimes people with autism they look away from people and sometimes they get into the habit of looking up and away at people instead of down and away at people all right totally get that i'm not gonna be able to handle that hey listen dude if that's what's happening, no hard feelings, unlucky. We just can't, we can't hang out. Because whenever you do that thing, I feel like you're disrespecting me. I, I don't like that feeling and you're not going to stop doing it. So we just, we just, we just don't have to be friends. I don't hate you. You're not my enemy, but we're not friends. And that's okay. I think that's a really healthy thing because there's so many, and, and my, the rationale I, I give to myself is there are so many people in my life who don't roll their eyes at me or like treat or do those like small little contemptuous behaviors. Another one, another one that I'm just like, I'm so over. Uh, Could you tell I've been arguing with women recently? Um, another one I'm super over is like, if I'm making a point and you like make like, oh, you do this kind of stuff when I'm talking or you like are disrespecting me as I'm like describing an issue that I have, I'm just like, if you respected me, you wouldn't do that. And just like, I'm, I'm just not going to hang out with someone who, d who doesn't respect me. It's like, I'm done. I'm like the, it's like, you could just, you can either stop doing that or I leave. Like those, those are the two outcomes here. I'm not going to tolerate it. And I think, I think, it, I think dating is fun because you, especially in your 30s, because you start to figure out the shit that really matters to you. Because when you're in your 20s, it's like, like when you're in your late teens, early 20s, kind of like a warm body, because you don't have to think about the future, right? Just like a warm body who has reasonably similar interests will do, man. You're good. You make each other laugh, you have a bit of fun, and you don't really worry about the problems of the future because you're so young that like if a big problem comes up, you just, you know, you end the relationship. It's over. You walk your separate ways. Now, it's like that on steroids. Because I'm meeting women in like their early 30s who are like, oh shit, I focused on my career and now I need to like find a man who's not insane. <laughs> But the problem is that they haven't, um, they haven't worked. Sorry, I, I need to pick a, a civic here. Reduce diplomatic plus one movement, culture, choose rock band promotions money. I guess I'll go for cultural hegemony. 
That's fine. Yeah, they haven't done the work of like developing their relationship skills. So they're still essentially like teenagers, like when it comes from an emotional intelligence perspective, when it comes to a relationships. And I'm just like, I like, I'll very calmly explain why I didn't like what you did and why I don't want you to do it again. And what exactly I do want you to do and that I'm not judging you for it. And that's totally fine. But I'm going to take that as disrespect. And it's not It's like it's going to be unhealthy for the relationship long term. I might not use that many words, but that's essentially what I'm saying. And I think that is way more rope than most people would give someone. Most people just be like, nah, dude. Or, or they would put up with it and then like explode later. And so now I'm in the zone of like, hey, you did a thing. I don't like it. You don't have to stop doing it necessarily. I think the only, and like some people, I, I, one of my friends said, don't you think that's a little bit controlling? And I'm like, uh, kind of. But I think specifically... There's one area in life I'm allowed to be controlling of other people, and that's how they treat me and how I treat other people. Those are the two areas of my life that I get to be controlling. I don't get to tell you what to do pretty much anything in your life. I can't tell you what to do. I can give you advice. I can give you my opinion. I can give you input. I can give you support, but I can't tell you what to do, except I can, I can tell you what you're not allowed to do to me. That's what I'm allowed. Like that to me, I feel very strongly about that, that I'm allowed to tell you, uh, uh, nope, didn't like that. Don't do it no more. Okay. So we can theme into the museum. And I think, I think that's a, that's a healthy and good thing that I can, that I, uh, you know, that people can do that. I think that's a good thing. So we're missing one, two, three more themes. Would be nice to get another theme to museum. Now Nagano, I believe is here. Would love to gold buy myself an archaeological museum. Don't have the cash for it. Can I interest you in everything all of the time? I know. What do you What do you think about that? I I get how someone will see that's like, oh, that's controlling, telling people what they you know, telling people what they can do. And I'm like, no, I think it's actually pretty respectful because I wasn't saying like, oh, you're a bad person. You rolled your eyes at me. You're a terrible. I was just like, hey, I felt this way when you did this. I don't like it. Don't do it to me. No judgment. No crime. No problem. Just hey. Uh, don't do that thing to me. And uh, I think any reasonable person will be like, yeah, you know what? Probably shouldn't roll your eyes at, at people. But like, I am super, I feel like I am super well-practiced. Fuck, I, I, and this is a mistake I'm making, I think a lot is, I'm super well-practiced at like interpersonal um, relationships in a lot of ways. And I meet a lot of people who aren't super well-practiced emotionally at this sort of stuff. It's actually, dude, it's, such a meme like the meme is like oh women are so good at like talking to each other about their feelings and being emotional and i'm like what because like the second i tell a woman that i feel something negatively about something they did they just oh, wow they go wild <laughs> they go rogue and i'm like hey listen i'm not attacking you or anything i'm just saying i didn't like what you did i'm just saying like when you said these words i felt this way that's all um but they just go rogue man I don't know what's going on. Am I, I wonder, I, I'm worried that I have a big old radar on me that like attracts potentially emotionally immature people. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like the vibe, right? I just said, I send it out there. Who knows? Because like, if somebody comes to me and they say, hey, uh, I got this problem with you. Don't do that anymore. I'm just like, yep, cool. No problem. Won't do it no more. We're good. But I think a lot of people have like super fragile egos because from my perspective, I'm just like, all right. I, well, I didn't know I was, I didn't know I was bothering you and I don't want to bother you. And I don't really care like what bothers you, but I just don't want to bother you. And this thing that you're asking me to not do, like, I'm not that emotionally attached to it. So I just won't, I won't do it no more. Like, uh, classic example. I used to be a smoker and I used to smoke in some of the common areas of the house. And my brother was just like to me one time, Hey, just don't smoke in that room, please. And I was like, yeah, okay, no worries, my bad. And I never, I never did it again. Or maybe I did it like once or twice, okay, in the adjustment period. But like, I never, I never sat down and was like, how dare he tell me what to do? Uh, oh, I didn't mean to do it. But I was just like, oh, okay. I didn't realize my behavior was affecting you. I'll stop. And I just, I just, I fundamentally, and here, here's the issue. I fundamentally just don't get it when other people can't do that. I just, I don't get it. I know other people are different to me, but here's the thing. I fundamentally believe all people are the same. Now, not like exactly the same, but we've all got the same machinery, man. You know what I mean? Like the same equipment. We've got the same operating software. 
Now, I mean, like we all we're all running a different version of wi- of Windows Human OS or whatever, right? But the the hardware, it ain't all that different. And so, like, when you would you would you're mad that I got a problem with something you did? I don't get it. I just I just don't get it. It's like I'm not attacking you. I just don't like that thing you did. It's not like I'm saying you're a bad person. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just telling you how I feel. Um, and it's given me a really bad impression of women's ability uh, to actually empathize with people uh, when their behavior affects them. And I think this actually probably relates to the fact that when I was much younger, oh shit, I think I just figured it out as I'm talking. When I was much younger, I was kind of a shitty person. Yeah, I think that's what it was. When I was much younger, I was kind of a shitty person. So in order to grow as a person, I actually super, like hardcore, had to learn how my behavior affected other people Um, and then take responsibility for that. And I don't know if everyone's gone through that process where you just you take responsibility for the things that you've done or do or the way that your behavior affects people. So maybe that's what it is, right? I think I might be onto something there on that front. Um, and I think I think everyone, to an extent, has the potential to be kind of a shitty person. Let me double check, right? Open borders, open borders, open borders. No, uh, no, I've got open borders with these three. I'm missing open borders with these three. Japan has denounced me, as has Korea. So I should be able to get it with Russia. Because, like, if you think about it, every, every kid is born an asshole, right? Every child is born kind of a jerk like that is just something i also think is just true and if they're not necessarily a jerk they're born with like they're born manipulative they're born passive aggressive like they're born with all the negative traits and you have to beat it no you don't have to beat it out of them you have to kind of like socialize the negative traits out of them right because everyone's born with a few negative traits and you got to stomp but not stomp you you get where i'm going with this i'm not saying like literally physically but you got to kind of like metaphorically massage, nurture, stomp, whatever the needs of the particular child and the negative behavior in particular is going to differ, right? But the the basic idea is everyone's got a few negative traits when they're growing up and you got to take them out. But after a certain point, you're not a kid anymore. And so if you don't know how to take on that parental role of yourself and to see those negative behaviors in yourself, you're shit out of luck. And if you have a particular type of personality where you just absolutely will not take responsibility or input from other p- people, you're shit out of luck again. And so is everybody who tries to have a friendship with you. And I feel like I'm just running into those people. And like, this is, again, this kind of goes back to that thing I was talking about. I, I, it's happening so much now that I'm starting to worry that I'm the problem. Like, am I the problem? Are my standards too high? And I, I think I think it's healthy that I'm asking that question, but it's kind of fun. Relationships are fun. I think people get way too down on themselves when they're talking about... Because I'm at the age now uh, and the stage of life where I'm like, oh, I kind of want a serious relationship. I'd like that companionship. You know, I want to, you know, I want to go on dates and, and watch movies and chill on the couch and, you know, share a dog. Let's have a dog together. That kind of stuff. Let's go on a romantic weekend to Venice. I hear it's beautiful this time of year. Um, all, all the usual sort of standard fare that someone might expect from a relationship. All those things, they'll sound great to me. They sound like a lot of work, right? A lot of effort, but they sound rewarding as well. And man, I don't know what's going on, but I'm running into a lot of, lot of duds. And I think another thing, okay, listen, I'm running into a lot of hot girl syndrome. Now, hold your horses there, guys. Red pills, don't swallow yet. Okay, let me explain what hot girl syndrome is. Um, It's basically when um, you are so attractive that nobody has ever given you pushback on your behavior your whole life. (laughs) And I'm running into that a lot because I've like, I've got the confidence now to like, because I'll chat up anybody. I don't care. You're 10. I don't care if I'm like a five. I'm shooting my shot. Okay. And if you answer back to me and you think I'm funny, I'm shooting that shot. But they just have like an attitude I don't know how to describe it it's so weird they all have the same kind of shitty-ish attitude and I'll just be like yo what you just said was disres- I found what you just said to be disrespectful and they just have never had anybody in their whole life tell them they've done anything wrong because everybody's just been like I don't want to use the word sucking up to them but basically sucking up to them and uh I'm like wow you're really not well adjusted <laughs> uh anyway it's fun I promise you. 
Um, I think I'm particularly well suited as a person. Like I have the personality type where stuff like that really rolls off my back. I like a lot of like I could honestly run into very and I know this is a fact actually because I I've been through many traumatic things in my life uh, over the course of my life. Um, but they basically roll off my back because once I talk about them, I feel fine. Okay, 371 tourists against Japan's 446. So yeah, we're on the verge of winning. Um, I know for a fact that I can handle traumatic events. Now, that's not to say that they don't affect me. They affect me and they build up baggage, right? But I feel like I can handle them a lot better than the average bear. I, I you know, I, I, can, I can fly very close to the sun. Uh, might be a way to describe it um, when it comes to dealing with traumatic things. Um, and when I say traumatic things, does it necessarily have to be something incredibly violent? It can just be like everyday trauma of like dealing with grief, dealing with breakups, dealing with um, whatever, whatever it is. OK, I just feel not uniquely equipped, but I feel well equipped to deal with an awful lot of that stuff. All right, let's go ahead and bam. Oh, green eel leveled up a thousand tourism. Feels good. A little bit late for me to be doing this, but hey, whatever. Uh, boom. Speedy star probably died. Yep, they died. That's OK. We, we expect a certain percentage of our rock bands to die uh, on the first on the first wave, okay? These, these are the guys Storm in Normandy. Stormandy. I do think I do think I'm in like an overcorrection phase because I've just I'm super I will use the word hypersensitive. I'm hypersensitive to shitty attitudes right now. So if somebody is like if somebody like says something like, are you serious? I'm like, are you seriously talking to me like that? Or if somebody like calls me stupid or like says dismissive things, I'm like, okay, do you want to be disrespectful of me? I'm, I'm leaving. See ya. And maybe I've, maybe that's like an overcorrection because I've been like letting people get away with it for too long. Um, but I'm super, I, 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 I feel like an extreme frustration right now at this point in my life where I'm like, bro, I know exactly what I want in life and from a relationship. And it's like, I just, I cannot, I need to, I need to date me. I need to find someone who's exactly like me, who has the same understanding of the world, super chill uh, in a lot of respects, has the same belief system, same belief structures. I just, I need to date me. You know what I mean? Because I don't, I don't roll my eyes at people. I don't make noises when they're upset. I just listen, hear them out. I'm like, all right, cool. All right. I'll work on it. My bad. I see how this is affecting you. We'll do that. And I realize now that that's actually probably a skill most people don't have. Anyway, I've talked about this a couple of series. Um, what do you what do you do? Ooh, you do better on theater squares. Unit lost. Unit lost. Uh, let's take roadies for a little bit of movement. Spaceports and campuses. Animal animals dead. What do you do? Spaceports and campuses. Boom. Hey, you leveled up. Lovely. You love to see it. What are you? Wonder tiles. Oh, hello. Go to the pyramids. What are you? Uh, seaside resorts and harbors. There's a harbor over there. And what are you? Ah, theater square. So we'll get that done next turn. So quite a bit of extra tourism there. Uh, 394 tourists. So we should be looking at a W in the next turn or two. But yeah, I'm curious to hear. I, I, I really enjoyed the discussion in the comments when I last time I talked about relationship stuff. Do you guys want to hear me talk about more of my experiences in life? I feel like I don't have too much, um, but I feel like I'm an insightful and introspective kind of person who understands himself. And I feel like, I don't know if I'm crazy, but I feel like understanding myself was a really good bridge to understanding other people because I just fundamentally think the machinery of people is like the same. Like I, like I really just believe that we're all kind of running the same operating system. Uh, we might interpret like bits of data differently, or we might, we might like our functions might differ a little. But the, 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 the stuff underneath, that's all, we're all running the same hardware. You know what I mean? Which is why I guess I have a very rigid view of the way people behave. Have I even finished the biosphere? Oh, it's right about to finish by the timing on that. That's incredible. So like, here's an example of something I believe is true. This is, this is a very deep and complicated topic, okay? Now, people say the phrase men and women can be friends or men and women can't be friends. But really those phrases are too simple to really capture what's going on there uh, let's perform on this 26 percent chance of death and he did level up perfectly okay men and women can be friends okay is true men and women can't be friends is also true because neither of these two statements actually capture the full reality of what's going on there's always going to be a blurred emotional or physical line 
between a male and female friendship on one party or the other. One person or both people are going to have some level of emotional or physical attraction to each other. Okay, that is just fundamentally true. You have to be. How could you be friends and not have that? It makes no sense to to have zero, right? There's going to be more than zero. I'm not saying everyone's going to be like, oh, I want to bang my female friend or oh, I want to date my male friend or whatever, right? But it's it's a non-zero amount and it's going to be different for every person, okay? And that's, that's how you make that statement. Men and women can be friends, but probably should exercise some boundaries, right? Or, you know, does that make sense? Whereas like, uh, okay, there's Biosphere. As well as the biosphere. This gives 200% power for offshore wind farms, solar farms, and wind, off, wind farms, geothermal plants, and hydroelectric dams. Uh, this building and all building improvements provide tourism equal to their power, a plus one appeal to tiles adjacent to rainforest and marsh in my empire. And so that is a beautiful, beautiful bit of uh, engineering there. 419 tourists. We're getting close. Um, oh yeah, look at that. Look at all those tourists. It's a beautiful thing. Anyway, the po the point the point of this is, look, I feel like conver the conversations we have about like social dynamics and how th it's like it's way too simplistic and like the people who have these conversations are just completely ill-equipped to have them. We have like dudes who have like incredibly narrow views of like what's an alpha male and and what's this the other and this is how a man should act. And I'm like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> you have a cartoonish view of relationships between people. You're a cartoon character. Every quote-unquote alpha I've ever met has just been like a family man with a business. <laughs> like that's, that's the, it's not some, you know, ripped giga chat. It's just like a dude with a lot of friends. <laughs> like that's, that's alpha, okay? It's a dude everyone wants to hang out with. That's all it is, in my experience. Anyway, listen, we'll not go there. That's, those are the dark topics. Uh, back to back to can men and women be friends? Yes, obviously. But that, like, I've had friends that I'm attracted to. I've had friends I'm not attracted to, and so like now I'm in the phase of my life where I'm like, you know what? I think if I had too many like super close female friends that I was hanging out with, like one on one, or you know, like I was texting, that would feel like an emotional affair to me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create a boundary between myself and women. Not like a hard boundary. I'll text them. Uh, like if I if I'm friends with the husband and wife I will freely text the wife more than the husband because I know everything I say to the wife is going to be told to the husband I'm that's that's my favorite kind of female friend now is if, like if someone is uh, hold on I gotta pick something to do with this guy if is if it's uh, someone my friend is married to because I know for a fact there's no like undercurrent to our relationship whereas like with if I'm single and I've got a friend there's always like that little bit of a oh that's kind of flirty and you don't know what could happen, right? Because uh, many of my relationships have been born out of friendships with people who I wasn't even considering as potential relationship material. But, you know, when you're in close proximity to someone, sometimes feelings do happen. It just, it just happens. Uh, and so I realized that, you know, a little bit of boundaries might be healthy if I'm looking for a proper relationship. All right, we're, we're nailing them for tourism right now. We're basically done here. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, look, my point is more complicated conversations. Okay, let's let's up the ante. Let's not let's not have these really simplistic analysis. I could also be so totally wrong. Also, don't forget, I'm just I'm just one guy. Other people have different life experiences. Maybe you have a different experience. Tell me about it in the comments. Okay, am I talking some bullshit? Am I speaking the truth? Uh, tourism win, by the way, is happening. Like, one of my rules, a boundary with, um, like, my female friends is if they're in a relationship and I'm on good terms with their their partner, I try to include their partner in our plans. A, because I don't want my behavior to look inappropriate. Like, oh, I'm hanging out with your wife alone, dude. Or I'm texting her alone. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, I, I would just be like, hey, why don't you bring... XYZ with us and we'll you know we'll all hang out together uh, I think I won the game I just press shift enter and I win anyway fun tourism game as Kamai very strange game very strange commentary for me towards the end honestly sometimes I just have to go on that kind of like ramble um, to give my brain something to do I'm very rarely am I actually talking about like things that I've 
thought very deeply of when I'm doing those kind of rambles. Usually they're kind of like the surface level thoughts that are occurring to me in the moment. Um, so don't take, take everything I say in these kind of late game rants with a pinch of salt. Some of the stuff I said is probably based. Some of it's cringe. Um, we'll sort that out in the comments. Uh, look at that culture though. Ooh, I bet you my faith was insane this game. Yeah, look at that thick faith line. Love and that. Uh, my culture must have been great. Yeah, it was. My science must have been okay. I mean, I eventually surpassed Sejong. Uh, I'm scared. look at the amount of cities that I captured. Once I went on that roll, once I took him out, that was where the snowball happened. But I mean, it was necessary. It was necessary. It was totally necessary to kill Babylon. God, look how many units I killed throughout the game. That's super poggers. Um, I actually didn't lose that many units. I did lose less than Guitarja, although towards the end there, I killed a few of her units. Um, yeah. Civilization 6, it's a fun game. Culture victory. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh... Stay awesome. Bye-bye.